Pete, we are on. Let's get All us right. going. All right. Thanks, Trey. Welcome, everybody, to Trey's Variety Hour tonight, this evening, the morning, the afternoon, whatever time it may be where you are. Today, we have three very special guests. Uh, we have Jay and Verena Patel, as well as Brent Mail. And we're going to be doing a little bit of a deep dive in a recent, what I think is awesome, landscape uh, photography workshop course. It's online. Um, so first, why don't we do a quick round of introductions, and then we'll get right to it. In the meantime, go ahead and bring up the event uh, that we're talking about right now. Go ahead into Trey's stream if you need to. Find the event, and you can ask questions right along the event. And then I'll be forwarding those up to the team, and we'll be discussing them right here. All right? Anyway, well, thanks. So let's go. Usually I try to go, like, left to right uh, on introductions and um, so, Verena, why don't you go first here? Sure. Um, yeah, I'm Verena Patel. Um, I'm a professional wilderness and landscape photographer, um, along with Jay Patel, who happens to be my husband. Um, I teach workshops um, all over the United States and beyond. I um, do uh, online courses. Uh, we have a whole series of ebooks and so on. Um, I think we're, we're almost primarily teachers rather than uh, just photographers. And uh, I recently um, started uh, taking on apprentices with the, the Arcanum. So it, it's been uh, a really cool year and a, a really cool couple of weeks for that. And, uh, yeah, that's me. Right on. Right. Thanks, Verena. Verena, you know, it's about to get cooler because I guess we can announce this now. We haven't announced this yet. But Verena Patel, um, as part of the Arcanum, is coming out to New Zealand to spend a week with all of us Woo! at a big event we have coming up. So, yay, Verena. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> I'm really excited about that. That's going to be a really cool trip. <laughs> yeah, and and this time you can just relax and take photos, and you don't even have to teach. You can just be awesome like you are. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay, who's up to bat next? All right, Pete? How about Jay? How about a quick intro? Well, I'm Jay Patel. I uh, am a, an educator primarily along with my wife Marina Patel. Uh, we've been doing this for a long time. We teach workshops and uh, all over the national parks um, across the world and um, produce video courses on occasions. Um, we also have a um, visual wilderness community which uh, we recently started in March. Uh, is going very well and uh, video course for us has been an awesome project along with our Australian partners and uh, we look forward to producing more of those content. Excellent. Hey Pete, I like how they have these uh, curtains behind them. It's like they're backstage at the newlywed game. It is. I, thought, <laughs> yeah. I, think, they're, I think they're like very plush velvet. Uh, oh yes. Yeah, they're plush velvet. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Uh, you should see the way we hung them. <laughs> They're hung yeah, from the like, ceiling um, <laughs> on, on metal rods. I mean, I feel like, like I feel like one of you is like inside the bathtub. The other one is just outside <laughs> of the bathtub. Why is it the dark and light side of the curtains? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I, I expect to see Jay's leg come up and just him run a razor right down it as he's just shaving. Right <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'll be scary. <laughs> There'll be, be some uh, manscape photography. Yeah. <laughs> I charge uh, more. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, and it looks like, uh, it looks like our, our last guest here, last but not least, Brent has decided to hang a car interior behind himself. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Brent, I have that. Intro? Yep. Okay, yes. Oh. So, what are the... Well, well he looks like Australia, Australia is running low on the bandwidth today. Yeah. <laughs> Brent? Yeah, we are. Sorry about that. Oh, there he is. Here you go. Go ahead, Brent. Okay. My name is Brent Mail. I'm a uh, full-time uh, professional photographer from Australia. I'm the other part of the team. Me and Johnny are the Australian part of Visual Wilderness. And um, thanks for having me, guys. I'm, I'm focused now on uh, giving back to the community, educating, and uh, sharing my experience with everyone. 
Very good. So, Excellent. so Brent, what's what's the story behind this um, new landscape tutorial? This really cool thing that Jay and Brina just released. Is this? Did they they fly out there to Australia, and you you were the the guy with the, the camera? What's that story? Yes, uh, Jay and Brina came out to Australia. They ran a workshop, and then for the next week, we actually filmed the Ultimate Landscape Photography course. They stayed at my place in the studio downstairs with uh, with a few little insects running around. It was a lot of fun, <laughs> and uh, and we worked pretty hard for about a week, and we created this this amazing course. But it was so much fun hanging with Jay and Marina and and filming it. I was the oh, film crew for a change. I I think I'd be scared to death of these insects. I I always get the impression that there's just anything in Australia can kill you in a second. <laughs> no, they were just little cockroaches. They were they were cute and you know little. A couple of inches. <laughs> Not big. <laughs> nah, they weren't that big. It's the small things that can kill you though. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, that and the hey, wombats. Pete. Yes, sir. Hey Pete, so um, you know you're you're kind of uh, you're in your first like real solid year or two of photography, and you you took a look at what they did, and you were sharing some reactions. Yeah. Uh, to their well, photography before our show, but you should reshare. You should have saved them for this, but now you can kind no, of. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> that was that, that was dress dress rehearsal. No, I was just saying that uh, I got a chance to to look at. Many of the different chapters, there's several things I, I love. First of all, I love the way it's laid out in a course style. If you haven't done this, go, go check out the website. We'll put it here in the, in the show notes on the event. But go check out the website, and you'll see the little teaser video. And the quality and the content just go up from there. Um, the way it's laid out is awesome because it's laid out like a real course. You go online, you're able to go chapter by chapter, in increasing level of, of detail. They've got case studies and helper files that take you all the way along. So for me, I like to learn very visually and by, by doing at the same time of learning, and it's perfectly organized. One of the best features I thought was how when you're at any chapter, you can pick up right from where you left off, which I thought was fantastic. It's one thing to kind of download, which you can still do, but it's another to have the cloud kind of keep track of that for you. You just go back to one URL and just pick up where you left off, which I thought was was fantastic. The the cinematic um, scenes are just they're fantastic. The content's fantastic. One of the comments I was making to Jane Vrena right before the show was that um, all of the little subtitles, it's like they were reading my mind, putting up the things that I wanted to know more about right in the subtitles. So just job well done, guys. It was, it's fantastic. Thank you. Thanks very Thanks. much. <clears throat> cool. Yeah, so for you guys, Jay and Brina, how would, how would you guys describe what's in this video? What, what are people going to get? Go ahead, so, Jay. Um, so I think when we first started the photography course, I mean, we've done webinars before, as most of you guys know, and we've done all kinds of materials, uh, workshops before and everything. So when we first started talking to Brent about this idea, um, and to be all honesty, Brent kind of twisted our arm and saying, well, how can I make this a no, a, a deal that you can't refuse? So he, he provided us with kinky toys in his uh, studio what? and everything. <laughs> And say, um, no, he actually put us up at his home. I was just kidding. Um, he put us up on his home. But our, our whole idea about the course was, look, there is very little footage available on location of uh, when you go out there and you see trash lying on the floor and all kinds of uh, harsh light and things that are not perfect. How do you go there, walk around in that environment, and come away with a great photo? Now, um, we can always show you, yeah, this is what the scene looked like on the beach and, and, and give you a great photo. But what we do in this course is we actually filmed it real time as if when, when we're talking photos, we, we're hooked up to the microphones. There are like four or five microphones hooked up to worrying on myself, some to the camera. And these guys are hovering all over around us, uh, taking shots at the back of the camera and everything. So you get, you get a sense of, of this real time, what really goes through our head as we're talking to the microphone. And then uh, we show you how the camera is set up, um, exactly 
um, what we're looking for in composition wise, uh, how to set the exposure, how to control the light. But we just don't stop there. Right, Marina? Yeah, I mean, I, I think what we're um, trying to accomplish with this course is the feeling that somebody's walking with you along the way, the entire process from beginning to end. Um, you can find a lot of stuff online, right, where you can go in and, and um, learn how to do this technique or that technique in Photoshop, or you can learn this specific uh, um, technique for, for, I don't know, narrow depth of field or, or whatever it is. There, there's so much information online, but I really felt, I think we all felt, that what was lacking was a, a beginning to end walk through where you're holding the hand of, of the person you're with. It's a workshop style course and the idea is that we explain to you our thought process, we explain to you the camera settings, we take it all through, uh, take you all the way through the field work and um, you know all the equipment that we're using, everything. We're explaining every little bit of it and then we take you into post-processing with the same images, the same files, and we actually open those up walk you through um, several case studies. We don't do that for every image. It could get kind of old after a while. We try and streamline it so that we're giving you the, you know, the most important images. And then we actually um, have the original files for those images that you can download to your system and, you know, post-process with us right alongside us so you can practice at the same time. Now, how much does this thing cost, Jane Reese? It must be like a thousand dollars. You guys must charge a thousand dollars, right? Yeah. No. <laughs> Five hundred dollars. <laughs> no. We love to. <laughs> we're charging one hundred and ninety-seven dollars. That's our what? Uh, list what price. A deal. What yeah, a deal. we wanted to make sure that it was, um, you know, something that people could really afford. Um, we we want to teach. We we also want people to buy it. You know. <laughs> so yeah, we want it to be affordable. Yeah. Well, we're we're also doing a um, giveaway. Jane, Brina, we're nice enough to offer a, a giveaway to somebody watching. Uh, Pete, how's this going to work? What's the situation here? Absolutely. So, if you again go to the Google Plus Hangout event on Google Plus and go ahead and post a comment describing, you know, your ideal way to take advantage of this workshop, this tutorial, and what you do with it. And um, Jay and Verena, before the end of this week, will uh, a, a winner will be selected at random from the group of comments. We'll put everything into a big pile, and we'll be selecting one before the end of the week. And so you get a chance. Go in there and place your comment in the system. Yeah, and if you can't find the event, if it gets, like, lost, like a stick in a river over time, this is what happens with these events. You can also go leave a uh, comment on the YouTube video as well. So just put it right there. And they can look both places and pick a lucky random winner. We will pick out a random. Actually, they'll pick out two random winners. How's that? Whoa. Two random and winners. All right. We'll give one of them um, the Ultimate Landscape Photography course, and we'll give another one a complete collection of our ebooks, all 19 of them. Great. Whoa. Very all generous. 19 ebooks. That's a big deal. Cool. So I, I had a question. Um, how. You want to put this video together. You want to call it the ultimate landscape tutorial. How do you decide what's not going to make the cut? How did you come together on what was the most important stuff to put in there for people? And just talk to me about that process. I'm dying to know. You know, I actually think that was easier than we thought it would be. Um, you know, we were out there in the field. We were um, working with uh, our, our crew, right, with Brent and Johnny and... Um, I would be standing there with my camera and I would start to shoot and I'd go, hang on, this is a lesson. You know, and I'd call Johnny over or I'd call Brent over and I'd say, all right, I have a lesson. They would set up, they would get ready for me and I would walk through the process. And it was so um, sort of surprising to me that it came so naturally. It was so clear where the lessons were and what I needed to teach, what part of it was important. And I think that comes from um, Jay and I having so much experience with teaching. We've been teaching a long time. We sort of have in our heads, you know, the, the questions that people are asking. Um, and so as we're working, you know, that's what comes into our mind. Okay, so this is something that I need to add here. I need to make sure this is clear. And um, yeah, so the process was pretty easy, I think. Jay, did, did you have something to add to that? 
Now, and another thing is we picked out the case studies. If you look through uh, Peter and uh, Trey's, we picked out the case studies so that they covered a number of different genres, um, everything from really bad light um, to uh, macro photography to night photography to shooting at golden hours. So um, it, it sort of is a comprehensive case study situation where we sort of go and explain how different, how we go about selecting different types of photography in different conditions. And originally our, our, our goal was to only put four case studies together, but when we finished everything, uh, Brent was such a slave driver that we ended up with like nine case studies, uh, <laughs> which is good for, for the course, of course. Awesome. Yeah. Brent. Um, while, I've st while I've still got signal, I, I just wanted to tell you, um, let you guys know, also, you, you ran a workshop for three days, and just before we actually filmed this course, so we took a lot of the questions that the people asked in the workshop, and we put those into the course, and we and we got feedback from the the 12 people that were in the workshop, you know, what, what did they like the most, or what did they get out of the workshop, and, and uh, what taught them the, the best thing, so we, we put those in the course straight away. Hey, I have, a, I have a weird question for you guys, Jay and Farina. What do you, what's something that you you figured out in landscape photography, like in the last year or maybe the last eighteen months, that had never really occurred to you, and then you look back and think, oh, I wish I had known this from the beginning. Like, what what's something new that's popped onto your radar, like a new realization with your work or with landscape photography? Wow, that's a hard one. <laughs> uh, I think I think for me, uh, one of the things that happens a lot um, is that I'll, I'll get a student who asks me a question and it'll start me sort of rolling on this this path of uh, deeper understanding right so I always feel like I learn so much from my students more from my students maybe than they learn from me um, so it's an amazing privilege to be a teacher in that way um, but I was having a conversation with someone on our workshop actually in Australia she asked me a question um, Diane she asked me a question and she said what is it uh, that you see in this scene? And you know, I hesitated for a minute, and, and she, she said, explain to me what, you know, she points out this guy, and he's mowing the lawn, and she says, explain to me how you would make a photo of this. And all of a sudden, my, my mind is just spinning. You know, I'm going, oh, oh, I get it. You know, first of all, I understood what she was asking. It was so much more than just, what would this picture be? And second, I realized that what I needed to convey with that image, you know, this has been in the back of my mind for a while. It's not that I didn't know it already, sort of, but to be able to articulate it and put it into words made, made a huge difference. And what I realized was that it wasn't about the scene itself so much as the emotions that I was sharing by photographing that scene and showing it to someone. What I needed to capture was the sweat on this guy's brow. It's something every one of us can understand. We understand what it's like to be hot and sweaty. I needed to capture the grass flying out of the mower because that is a shared experience. It's something we all understand. This, the smell of grass, the, the, you know, that feeling of, of cut grass in the summer, that's, that's a big thing. Um, you know, the, the, the sort of slightly funny uh, aspect of this scene where this guy was mowing the tiniest strip of lawn you have ever seen. It was, you know, it was like six feet long and a foot wide. You know? <laughs> and, and I said, you know, show that. But then equally important is what you don't show, of course, right? The, the lady walking up the street, the, the car in the driveway, all, all these things that just don't have anything to do with the scene. And, you know, articulating that was something that took... Um, you know, 20 minutes to sort of explain why and what I was thinking, but the idea is that it came down to shared experiences, something that I know you, as my viewer, will understand, and so I can give that to you in, in a neatly wrapped package, you know? So, you know, sometimes people, um, like, have a different kind of photography that they're into, like, not landscape. They There's a lot of photographers that maybe just do studio or portrait or kids or weddings or whatever. And then I've heard this comment a lot of times from from people and I wonder what your answer to it is because I, I never know how the heck to answer it but like so then they're going to go out and shoot landscapes or they're in a situation where they're going to shoot landscapes and they 
you know, they might be like super accomplished photographers in, in other ways, but they they're not even sure how to approach to take a landscape. But they always have to get their mind thinking in that way. They can't just easily move into that mind space. So so for people that have other kinds of photography uh, backgrounds, um, do you have any advice on how to get them to, to reset their minds or just like let the landscapes come to them as easily as their other kind of photos? So let me let me see if I can I can take this shot. One of the things that we learned in a um, few years, last few years about teaching landscape photography is the primary difference between a studio photography, a macro photography, or um, or even a portrait photography is that the subject matter that you guys are dealing with in those kinds of situations is small. And being a small subject matter, a group of people, or, or a single person, or a small macro, you can control the light and the environment around you, around them, in, to some certain extent. You can put them in shade, you can put them in fire flash, you can have a reflector diffuser. With landscape photography, the primary difference, and most people have struggled with when you come from a different photography genre, is you don't control the light, the weather, and the conditions that you encounter in the field. If you go out in the field and expect to get perfect weather and are prepared to shoot in that perfect weather with glorious skies and everything going right, you will come away with almost very disappointing photographs or, or will come away from a trip saying, wow, this is a waste of time. So that mindset reset is, you're, you need to reset your mindset. You will not control the elements that you find on the scene. And it doesn't have to be weather. It could be just about anything. Like we were in Canada in August, and weather was beautiful. I mean, perfect skies and, and gorgeous clouds rolling through. But a lot of the roads we wanted to go to were closed because there was a flood six months ahead that had destroyed all the roads in the area. Six weeks, not six, six months. Yeah, six weeks, sorry. <laughs> so yeah. that, that mindset that has to change, that you will be adapting to the environment that you will face when you go there. And that has happened to us over and over and over again. And I, I think uh, that's a good way to answer it. And I think if people are just getting started with photography, which so many people are, <clears throat> I always do recommend landscape photography first rather than product or people because you know when you're learning photography you just like you're you're always overwhelmed by your own uh, incompetence right because you don't know how to use the camera you're still trying to figure out your settings and if you're trying to figure that out like while well, there's another human there or you're in a studio situation where other people are around like it's really awkward and really embarrassing and then because you're always thinking about oh what are these people thinking about me while I'm trying to figure out my camera or I, I should be looking cool or I should really know how to do it. So you just get all these secondary and tertiary thought cycles that can really get in the way. But when you do landscape, you're always by yourself. And so you can you can wrestle with your own incompetence in the solitude of nature. True. I love that. <laughs> Make a fool of yourself and nobody will see it. Yeah. No, I, I bet. I I, well, at least I hope you guys are still like me where... You know, I, I go out and take a photo because things are going crazy. It looks beautiful. So I go out there and then I look at my camera. I'm like, okay, what were my settings before? Why why am I in this mode? And then I have to re reset everything. And I mean, you know, I've, ta I've taken a lot of landscape photo photos and I, I still go out there and I have to s mess with my camera sometimes for five or Sometimes I get it right away, but sometimes they're like, oh, it takes me 10 or 15 seconds to figure out what, what the hell my settings should be. Well, that happened. I was going to say, I had a question. No, I, I had a question. Think. I had a question about the. You talked about this being a really a workshop style course, and I was curious about the challenges about really leaving the conventional video tutorial kind of frame of mind. And what challenges did that pose to you when you started to have to rethink this and say, you know, we want this experience. We want it to be something that the viewer is actually right alongside with us. What were some of the challenges and decisions or trade-offs you had to make when you're thinking through the creation of this and the execution and you know finally putting it up there for people to view and consume. Well I think there were a few challenges you know sound in the field is much more difficult than in a studio or in a in a you know in enclosed space so wind is a huge problem. Um, I think for Jay and I, probably the hardest part was recording our stupid intros. Oh man, we sucked at that. 
<laughs> you know, we I mean, can, we'd be, we, sorry, Jay, go ahead. We can do lessons in one take. It yeah. took us like 20 <laughs> takes and we still could not get the dumb intro correctly. Yeah, I mean, we were just stiff. We were, you know, like, and now we're going to talk about the, ah, can we start again? You know, I mean, it was... <laughs> it was just awful. So a few of them we actually came home re-recorded. A few of them we decided were not so bad and that people wouldn't, you know, like throw away the course because the intro wasn't very good. But yeah, I mean, we found ourselves having trouble with that. It was stilted. It was it was so difficult to say these are the five things we're going to cover in this section. I mean, why is that so hard? You know. Yeah. And yet, I could do the hyperfocal distance explanation in one take with no problem at all. You know, and it's just yeah. like a thirty-minute talk, and yet that didn't that didn't phase me. No, and, it's, I think so, that comes from you guys. You you guys are humble, and I think for people that are humble, sometimes it's hard to kind of be a little bit forward like that, right? Because you have to wind up talking about yourself and this and that on an intro, and it's just it's you know I can understand that. Yeah, it, it could be kind of awkward. <laughs> yeah, it's great. So Brent, what would, about? Oh, oh, sorry. Go no, ahead. No, go. No, yeah, no, no. I was after just say, we had a whiteboard that we were using. Brent was a genius. You know, he was like, "Okay, this isn't working. Let's bring out this whiteboard that I have." And you know, we're standing in the sand dunes, and I'm scribbling down notes on this whiteboard. I'm like, "Okay, I gotta, I gotta write down the five or ten or fifteen things that we have to talk about." And and Jay's like, okay, should I say it first? Should you say it first? We, you know, so it was all this back and forth. And then we get up there and we're talking. And you can see, like, my eyes, I'm obviously looking down at something. And then I talk and Jay's looking down at it, you know? <laughs> okay. It, it, it was terrible. <laughs> it was really bad. Yeah. I think something that helped too, guys, uh, was that we actually had two landscape photographers behind the video cameras too. So what we would do is we would actually ask Jay and Verena a question, you know, what what is this lesson about? And then they would tell us and we'd film that. Yeah. yeah, that did help a lot. Once we sort of got into the groove, we were a little better, you know, we figured it out. But it, it's a learning process. It's something you're not used to doing. And you get out there and all of a sudden, you know, you have to do it and you've got two cameras in your face, you know? <laughs> Hey, Pete, um, should we have him share some photos now? I was just going to suggest, yeah. People want to see photos. I can sense the internet. Yeah, exactly. Well, hey, as they get their photos right, I'll make a, a little uh, programming note, by the way. You'll notice that the show is incredibly uh, infrequent and, and random in almost every way. But this is actually how I am. So this <laughs> show is nothing but a, a physical internet manifestation of myself. So you shouldn't predict that it'll be on like this week at the same time next week or anything like that. I've actually just been like incredibly busy um, lately, and so I know you, the viewing audience, you're so loyal and everything. I really appreciate it. And you deserve better. You deserve a, a regular show or something, and I, I cannot provide that, but I'll, I'll do my best and try to get like clever people like this around to hang out uh, whenever I can, okay? I'll, I'll, I'll try to be better, all right? So I, I apologize. <laughs> The atonement. <laughs> yeah. Hey, can you yeah. like see my screen? Oh yeah. All right. Is is it uh, because I can't see it? If I bring up the Google Plus screen, it's gonna go kind of crazy. So. Yeah, we see your whole screen. Looks cool. All right. So here I'm gonna show you guys some photos now. Um, this particular image was actually taken during our workshop, uh, just like two days before, and we were filming a part of the course over here. So one of the things that happened was um, I had a mirrorless camera and I was just walking between the two groups of students that were probably about half a mile apart. And I see all these beams of sunlight coming down. I had no tripod, nothing with me except this camera, mirrorless camera that I was holding. And I just looked at it, snapped a photo and say, good enough, uh, check the histogram, everything was okay and just kept walking to the other group of students. And uh, one of the things opportunities like this provided for us is we came back here um, on one of the recording sessions and recorded a photo shoot for the beach. And that is actually one of the courses that we have given. So you can see that um, as a part of the workshop, we were kind of going over the location, familiarizing ourselves as to what to expect when the sun is setting, what directions, and uh, what the local organic material is. 
So, what kind of mirrorless camera did you use, Jay? Oh, we were using um, uh, provided to us by um, Fujifilm Australia. We were using XE2s. Mm, okay. Um, and uh, had a great ISO range. So, so Trey, all I did was just crank up the ISO to to because I didn't have a tripod to just steady it. Which is really unusual for us. We we yeah. our tripods are like you know a fifth limb. <laughs> So here's another photo. Now um, this is a this photo actually is included as a part of the course. We give you guys the raw files for this. Now as a part of the learning question is, you know, you see, you go to these locations, you see this beautiful photograph, and then you um, you come back and you open up the files and it's like, wow, this looks nothing like what I remember. And, and that happens to all of us, right? Because the the, the Highlights are blown out in here, and the rock face is overexposed. The color in the water is good, but the sky is overexposed. So, so that happens. So one of the lessons in a case study we provide is we take this photo and we give you a detailed video about how to process that and bring out what looks like a more natural colors with uh, all the details that you see in the highlights restored. So this is a part of one of the case studies as well. And we went to this location at midday. And uh, in spite of what Brent has to say, this is my office. I claimed it here. I was here first. <laughs> so next time we go back, I'm putting a chair up and calling it my office. That's it. <laughs> so and that's one of the things we talk about in the course is, is um, shooting when the light is not ideal. You know, it's it's not all about shooting in perfect lighting conditions at sunset or or you know um, during the golden hours. We we want to show that there are things that you can shoot all day long. When we're on location, we don't stop shooting because the sun's too high in the sky. We simply find the best subjects for for whatever conditions we have. Um, you know, we're trying to make the most of our time on location. So that's something we talk about quite a lot in this course. And um, which is interesting enough that our cover photo for the landscape photography course was also taken during midday. Um, a lot of people would expect that the cover photo would be taken during golden hours. Is after all a photography course, but but a photography course, a good photography course, like a good photography instructor, is going to be able to show you things that. Um, is not always very obvious to other people is going out in the midday trying to find a location and a setting that would actually give you a very good photo. Hey, Jay and Verena, by the way, I was looking at the comments and Gary Monroe has called you to the benevolent overlords. <laughs> wow. Thank you, Gary. That's such yeah. a nice thing to say. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Gary's our, our buddy on, on G+. <laughs> hey, uh, why don't you talk a little bit about what kind of wide-angle lenses you guys like to use, because those are, those are often the landscape photographer's best friends, so I bet people like oh. to know what kind of lenses you guys use yeah. there. We have a couple of lenses that we use, um, wide angles. We have um, a 17-40 to 40, um, that we use on a full-frame camera. And we also have a 10 to 22 that we use on a crop. Um, and, and you know, a lot of people tell us that if you are shooting with a crop factor camera, uh, you're not a pro. And, you know, it, it's just sort of one of those other rules that we like to break. It, it's, a, it's a ridiculous statement that you have to have a certain kind of camera in order to be a professional. And uh -oh. it means losing my Verena there. I think I think some pro photographers came in and tried to cut her feed for saying such yeah. an oh, incendiary yeah. thing like that. But of course, I I agree, Verena. I think actually it's not just wrong when people say, "Oh, you're not a pro photographer if you don't do this or this or this or you name it." Actually, it's just it's just condescending, um, yeah. and it actually says more about them than it does about you. So I give I everyone permission to ignore these kind of nonsensical comments. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing is we um, we always say, you know, people have been taking great photographs since they were produced on glass plates. You, you really should not be looking at a camera and say, this is what limits me in producing photographs. Uh, just go out there, have fun, 
and, and use what you have. And, and if you don't have a tripod, just crank up your ISO and just get the shot. There are times yeah. when a, a crop factor camera works better for your needs than a full frame. And, and that's true for whatever equipment you're using. There are times when that equipment might be the better choice. Hey, let me else? ask you guys a, a post-processing question. What is your, uh, do you have any like new discoveries, any new post-processing discoveries? Either maybe it's like an old product, old, but you know, something like Nick that's been around for a while, like Color Effects, but there's like a special filter in there that you started using in a different way, or just, just give us something new. Jay, go ahead. <laughs> Dump that one on him. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'll tell you a cool discovery that we made in Iceland just last year and um, how it has impacted our processing. You know, one of the di most difficult things in a landscape photography is to be able to set the white balance of your image. And um, we had had this experience before is um, we all know that there is um, your brain adapts to the lighting conditions you have. For example, we all know about a phenomenon called uh, night vision. As the light goes down, your, your brain becomes, or your eyes become more sensitive and your brain can see details that you cannot see on a normal level. Well, what we discovered was we were walking around in Iceland on a beach and Raina discovered this. So I'll give her the credit. Uh, and she kind of, Pause, and as if she was having, I don't know, some something weird happening to her. She I thought, thought I, must have... I thought maybe I hadn't eaten enough breakfast, or I like I was like, what is wrong with me? I feel so weird, <laughs> like I'm dizzy or something. The rapture. So, <laughs> yeah, that's, it was. Yeah, that's that's she, she, she actually stopped walking, and she says, "Why am I seeing these?" rocks and my hands, everything is like a 3D effect, as if you're wearing those 3D glasses in the movie. Yeah, it was really what, a strange thing. Right, so what she did was she actually closed one of her eyes. And when she closed that eye, one of the eyes, everything turned blue. And then she closed another eye and everything turned yellow, gold. What was happening was um, the sun was at such a low angle and it was hitting uh, right from the side. So this eye on the side that the sun was off was completely in shade. This eye was completely in the sun. So both eyes had adapted to a different white balance. So, so my brain we was discovered to resolve that. Right, yeah. and it is seeing this thing in three-dimensional. So, and you can actually try this um, at at a sunrise time when the color temperatures are very uh, distinct. Um, just go ahead and stand there so that one of your eyes, and within like a minute, a minute and a half, if you keep standing there, and then just look at your hands and just close your eyes, and you'll actually see the two different color balances instantly. That's what I did when we were there in Iceland. I actually took Jay. Uh, I grabbed his arm and I was like, okay, turn your head like this and look down at the white and, you know, white rocks on black sand and just wait. And he's like, what? <laughs> like, just, just wait. Just, just, I don't know how to explain this. Just hold on, you know? <laughs> so, so yeah, I mean, he was able to see it too. And of course, you know, we knew pretty quickly what it was that, that, that sunlight coming in at that angle was, was causing it. But you know, it, it's interesting when you discover something like that, uh, you know, sort of organically and, and have somebody with you you can show it to and talk to who doesn't think you're crazy. <laughs> so um, one of the things we use this for in our post-processing tray is um, oftentimes we'll process an image with uh, two or three different color balances, one for the shade, one for the midtones, one for the highlight. And then we will blend them together to create the, the look, the natural looking image that we are well known for. I dig it. That's cool. Um, that's, that's interesting. I've never experienced that. I, I probably won't, but it must be nice to have two eyes that work, guys. Yeah, uh, we're sorry about uh, that, Trey. <laughs> No, actually, that's an, it's an, I never even thought about that. That's really interesting you discovered that. Um.
But you but I, I, been I bet there is no. We had actually seen this before, Trey, but we didn't realize what it was. But and I bet you can actually see this. Um, we went to Hawasu Falls a um, couple of years ago, um, actually several years ago, and they had these porta potties with green roofs on it. So you go into the porta potty, you close the door, and the entire uh, porta potty is filled with green light, sort of like a, almost like a fluorescent green light. And so you sit there for well, however long it takes, and you come out. How, how long, for example, Jay? Just, <laughs> get, how long? Uh, two minutes and 35 seconds. How is that? <laughs> so, I, and then you, I, I come out, and uh, everything, the trees, the leaves, everything looks magenta. A very, very, very distinct magenta. And that was our first um, sort of clue that eyes adapt in terms of colors. There's and both a, eyes. I saw another cool experiment, um, and people would put on glasses, and it, it would offset your the angle that the light would come in by 45 degrees. And so you put them on, and then they would put um, like a, an apple in front of you on a plate, and then you would use like a, a knife and a, a fork to, to cut the apple, okay? But it like it totally throws you off because your body thinks it's someplace and your eyes think it's someplace else. So anyway, they, they did this to time how long does it take for someone's brain to rearrange the light around them so that they can actually, you know, cut an apple or whatever. And so they figured out it took about 90 seconds, all right? Wow. So they would have them cut all kinds of stuff, and their, their eye would get used to everything being displaced. And then what they would do is they would take off the glasses, and then they would tell people to cut the apple, and, like, no one could cut the apple anymore. And they said, well, how long does it take for their vision to reset back to where it was normally? And that took about five minutes. So it took about three or four times as long to go back to normal than it did to adapt to the new situation. Oh, that's huh. such a fascinating study. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty yeah. freaky. Actually, well, if you think about it, you know, our eyes do all kinds of crazy stuff. We actually, you know, you know how a camera works, of course. We actually see everything upside down because it all, you know, flips around on the back here, your cornea. Right. And then your brain flips it over so that you don't always feel like you're walking on the ceiling. But we just, we just absolutely take that for granted, even though we do see the world upside down. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's always fascinating for us as landscape photographers to see what comes out of the camera and how the camera sees as opposed to how we see. And being together at times, we can show these situations to each other and say, oh, yeah, I really am not crazy. <laughs> well, I think, you know, based on this conversation, our next ebook is going to be called Lessons I Learned in the Porta Potty. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I actually had one more question around some of the, uh, the other assets that are included in the workshop. Um, you guys provide all these raw files and example, you know, before and after, but you also include uh, some checklists in there for people, which I thought was fantastic. It gives you this, this peek into your backpack, so to speak. And um, I was just curious about, again, like coming, coming to terms with that list and kind of modifying it for the audience. Can you talk a little bit about how you kind of decided, like, what was going to be the, the gear set that we're going to share with the world here? Is this, um, I'm you sure know, this is years and years in the making, right? Yeah, it, it actually is. That list. Of, of gear. It's, it's been modified over the years, but um, it's something that we started putting together when we first started uh, teaching workshops in the field. And, you know, people would say, well, what should we bring? And we'd kind of rack our brains and think, okay, you got to have this and you got to have that. And we'd, we'd put together this list. Um, and so, you know, it got to the point where we had a pretty solid list and we could take things off for different uh, situations, you know, these things are are removed if you're going to be in in uh, the desert. These things uh, you should bring if you're going to be in the mountains. Whatever it is, you know, um, and and we actually have a, a collection of different things in there that um, you know different lists and and charts and things. Um, and basically, what we did is, uh, you know, while we were in the field, while we were teaching, every time we mentioned something like that, we would you know, write it down. Brent would be like, okay, we have to make sure that we get people that hyperfocal distance chart, or we have to make sure that people have access to uh, that downloadable file, um, or, or whatever it was. And so all those little things, then when we got home, we prepared them 
uh, for Brent and for uh, Russell, who was uh, our guy in um, in Scotland, who helped us put it all together. And um, you know, th those things all ended up incorporated into the course. Yeah, it definitely uh, seems like you guys, you know, you you walk the talk, right? Not only do you kind of offer this guidance, but then you really live it, which I think, again, just adds to the bottom line there. That uh, that list is was very easy for us to pick up because that's exactly what we carry. Um, <laughs> that includes like the survival gear, the camera gear, miscellaneous stuff, uh, food, water, and, and wherever we go, our backpacks are always packed. So if you send me a plane ticket and say uh, jump on the plane in an hour, my backpack for camera backpack is always packed. What I have to do is just put my clothes in a bag and just go. Yeah, and, and you know what? We're so consistent uh. about what we bring in our camera bag that I can actually pick up my camera bag when I'm ready to go. And if there's something missing, I know that there's something missing. And I put it back down, and I'm like, yeah, I'm like three ounces off here. I'm I'm joking, you know, maybe a little more than three ounces. But if one of my lenses is missing, I know immediately that I need to open it up and check, you know. So <laughs> that might be the definition. That might be the definition of a professional ability to check gear by weight. Yeah, Brady picks up her, her giant bag. She's like, oh, I I feel like there's an SD card missing. Right. Yeah, <laughs> it's not that. Princess. Princess in the P. <laughs> princess in the SD. The princess, princess in the SD. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, you'll have to test that out. Well, I wanted to ask Brent um, one more question. It looks like, Brent, you had some fun, too. There's plenty of clips filled with a little bit of humor and, and those kinds of things. Um, aside from having fun all the time, what were some of the kind of things you learned from the other side of that lens, just putting together this style of, of tutorial. Uh, thanks, Peter. Yeah, um, it was really interesting uh, filming Jay and Verena. They're so knowledgeable. And, you know, even Jay would, uh, would tell me what the white balance is. You know, he'll, he'll tell me, no, it's, it's 6,500 K right now. We need, to, we need to adjust the camera to that. And I think um, something that Jay forgot to mention in his camera bag too is he forgot to put in the gummy snakes, the little sugar snakes that I was feeding him to keep him energized through, throughout the, uh, the filming of the of the course. And uh, and one of the things that really hit Johnny and I in hysterics was when Jay and Verena tried to speak Australian. So what we did was we, we put the cam, uh, camera on a tripod, we started filming them, and then Johnny, because he's the only true Aussie around here, I'm from South Africa originally, uh, he would mention something in Australian, Australian slang, and then he'd get Jay and Verena to say it back to us. And we were trying not to laugh too much and, and, and have the, the sound get into the recording. And... I mean, my stomach was so so sore the next day from laughing so much. It was crazy. It, it, it's, it's a really good video. You should check that out. It's so funny. Excellent. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, I saw, I think, part of that. There might have been 15 takes to get the one, uh, the no, one phrase he, down or something. <laughs> no, what Johnny would do is he would actually tell a slang, and then he would actually turn the slang. When I say, um, let me see if I can repeat it. And when I repeat it, he would actually give me another set of slang. So it was not quite, and then I was like, I was saying, I was translating, and I, I almost insulted. I was like, what if I were to go up to an Australian and try to, to speak Australian, and instead of trying to do a slang, I insulted his mother or something, and I would be in serious trouble. I just kept thinking that. I, I just started laughing. And after that, I just lost it on the video. <laughs> Yeah, and I think part of it was, it was just watching Johnny and Brent trying not to make not a sound to laugh. while <laughs> yeah. they were, you know, it, they were all these contortions <laughs> as they laughed. So, yeah, I mean, you know what? We got along really, really well, the four of us. Um, we had such an incredible time for the 12 days we were down there. And, you know, I mean, it's, it's um, something that I will always remember. I've never felt so welcome in any location ever. Uh, it, it was amazing. It was really, really cool. That's great. One more, uh, one more question, and then I think we'll we'll start to wrap it up here. But so you get to put all this great content together. You have this great experience. But I know you guys have more, right? So can you should yeah. <laughs> so 
can we be expecting another edition and another maybe three months, half a year? Like, what are the things that you because you, you, you have to you have to stop at some point, right? There's so much good stuff, but yeah. there's a lot more to do. So what what were the two or three things that you guys, when you finish this up, you were just dying to just go back right back out there and go make the next series, right? What were some of those things? Maybe you can tease us with what the cliffhanger will be in this landscape tutorial epilogue. Yeah, we actually, while we were on location, we were already talking about future videos. We came up with a list of um, eight or nine or ten videos that we want to do over the course of the next couple yeah. of years, and we already have them, you know, planned out, fleshed out. We have outlines laid out. Um, and Jay and I have been working on those, and I think we just sent them to Johnny and Brent the other day for their input to, to add to it and, and you know, see what we come up with. But cool. we have courses planned on everything from light to um, equipment. Uh, what else, Jay? Weather, shooting in bad weather is one that we want to do. You know, so what and, else? And also some missing? very detailed technical stuff like um, how to focus when you're out in the field. Um, yep. Uh, and one of my favorites is the photo I didn't take. Mm -hmm. Now think about that. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go ahead and, and try to, we have um, other things, uh, impact, creating impact is one of them. So we have about nine or uh, ten different topics and we're going to start picking them off. Um, I think we should expect something. I don't know, Brent, if I'm optimistic, uh, slap me down. Um, <laughs> Sometime in summer, we should have at least something, right? More? Oh, right on. Yeah. It's summer, your summer or my summer? <laughs> oh, our summer. Our uh -oh. summer. Not your summer. Our <laughs> summer. Your winter, our summer. <laughs> right. Hedging by June. Let's say by June. Well, it took us about a month to edit all those videos, right? Yeah. yeah. Goodness. Excellent. Um, well, I, I will say this. There's one other question in here from Adam Israel. He's just asking about a simple one-page cheat sheet available that can cover most photo situations. Um, wow. Like a three-by-five card for <laughs> <laughs> your shooting you situations. Know, I don't know. That's difficult. That's something we might have to think of. You know, I mean, landscape photography is incredibly broad. You have everything from, from yeah. tiny subjects to huge subjects. You have things you have to deal with uh, in terms of, um, you know, color balance in, in post-processing, but also light in the field, equipment. I, I do not think I would know how to cover it all in a, in a single note card or on a single sheet of paper. I can give it, I can cover it in one sentence. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> you, you, want to, you want me to see if I can take a crack at Adam Israeli? There, yeah. There's one sentence I'll cover everything. There's no cookie cutter approaches. <laughs> cover everything? I thought it was going to be put a comment and hope to be selected as the winner for the <laughs> landscape <laughs> tutorial. <laughs> I was, uh, was going to say that too, but I was. Uh, <laughs> okay, it was a, that was an easy toss up for me to hit. So, cool. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, any other any other tidbits or things you'd like to leave with hey, the you audience? Want to, um, you want to give out um, discount codes, or you want to put it in the show notes? Uh, either way is fine. Whatever. Trey, you got a preference on that? Discount wait, give, code. Wait, what? Well, in addition, beyond the uh, the giveaway, they're offering up a uh, a discount code to the viewers. Oh yeah, what is the discount code? Of course. Um, the discount code that I send it to is um, ULPC-VH2014. I'll send it to you via email. We should put it in. Yeah. Just rolls off the tongue. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> I, yeah we I actually, him, you have to simplify that, and, and he had already sent it. So. I had already no, sent no, it. No. Over, so. <laughs> it's fine. We'll, get it, we'll get it in the show notes for sure. Yeah. Yep. Cool. All right. Cool. It's very, yeah, I'll super, super here. generous. Yeah, super generous of you guys. Well, thanks everybody. This was this was really really great. I I love the behind the scenes look um, at the development of this awesome landscape tutorial. If the if the audience, if you guys haven't gone check it out, please do go 
go to the, the website is in the um, in the show notes here. It's Photography by Verena, and they've got a rotating image. You can just click on it, and you'll be able to see it, and I'll put the direct link in there as well. But um, have a go at the teaser and definitely take a look. And uh, if you can, please go ahead and put your comments in the event stream, and a winner will be selected at random before the end of the week. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Pete. Thanks, yeah, uh, thank you. Verena. That was awesome. Thanks for thank having us. Yeah. Yeah. Nice to meet you, Brent. Um, all right. I guess goodbye, everybody, and uh, thanks for watching. Thanks again, Pete. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for the time. All Have right. Bye, guys. See ya. See ya. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye.